I'm in Costa Rica. And today we are eating rarely seen indigenous food with the amazing Maleku people. This is local medicine, iguana fat. It works like a milk, and the children, they will be growing pretty healthy. Chicken of the trees and chicken of the ground. Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Weens. I'm in San Rafael de Guatuso, which is in Costa Rica in Central America. And this is home to the indigenous Maleku people, who have a population of only 650 people. Today we have a once in a lifetime opportunity where the head of the village, of the community, of his family has invited us over to his house to cook, to eat, to learn about the local, unique, indigenous food. This is food that's rarely ever seen, food that's almost been forgotten. It's pre-Columbian, it's dishes and foods that have been around before Costa Rica. Buenos días. Buenos días. Buenos días. Mucho gusto. gusto. Mucho gusto. Elías. Elías. Mi nombre es Elías. En español, en mi idioma me llamo Hakima. Ah. Hakima. Hakima, Hakima, Hakima es representa es ser una persona líder, amante a la naturaleza. Gracias por visitarnos el día de hoy. Somos una de las culturas más pequeñitas. De Costa Rica. So we've just been welcomed into the village, into the community. His name, his Spanish name is Elias, but his local indigenous Maleku name is Hakima. And he's the head of the community, of his household, of his family. And he's in charge of welcoming guests. He's in charge of showing culture. And also, he's also in charge uh, of the food. And he said that they do pottery, agriculture, raising animals, hunting is also a huge part of their culture. Muy bien, amigos, uh, my name is Alcides Elizondo. Welcome to Malecus community. We are about 650 Malecus surviving today. Mm -hmm. This is our territory. Uh, the governments, they did a reservation in 1977. It has uh, about 3,000 hectares. But we are sad because today, of these 3,000 hectares, we are keeping only like 40% of our land mm. in is considered reservation. But we are working hard because we, we want to recover all, all the land. Mm -hmm. uh, why we want to do that? Because originally and legally, Malecos are hunters. Okay, we are in the modern, but today we have this very good, I mean, this permission, legally. We can hunt, we can go for fishing, we can go for, in the forest, hunting some animals. Why? Because this is part of the, of the tradition for, for surviving. We are uh, inviting you to come with us and we wanna show you how can we make some typical food. Mm. And now, today, you are going to have this experience to, to try how is the Malecos food? How it tastes? So, pura vida and welcome and enjoy with us. Thank you. Happy to be here. That was amazing. That was a perfect overview. Uh -huh. And I also think, you know, there's many aspects to culture. There's many aspects to a people. But for me, I mean, loving food and also traveling for food, there's no bigger part of a culture than food. Thank you very much for inviting us today and for this incredible opportunity. Just to keep in mind, um, Mr. Elias, he will be speaking, and most of the people from the community, they still speak the local Maleku language. So he's going to be speaking in Maleku, and then his brother will be translating into English. Okay, amigos, welcome. So today we are going to start preparing the food and the fish. 
that we like to eat a lot here in Maleco. Or the most important things for the fish is this leaf that we call anise or estrella. In Maleco language, we call quingon. Quingon is the best part because it's gonna give like the best flavor for the fish. Okay. Okay. This kind of dish in Maleco, we call them mafurice. We have to put it around here, around the fire, okay? Like for 30, 40 minutes, something like this. Always depend how is the fire. And after that, the, the, the fish is gonna be ready. As you can see, then he puts it onto the fire, but it's a more of an indirect heat, not directly into the fire, but on the sides of the fire. Those leaves are gonna protect the fish on the inside and also give it that incredible fragrance, that natural fragrance. The next dish that we're going to be preparing. This is the iguana, which in Malekwe is uh, era. So we are gonna prepare era. This is part of the tradition and also of the culture that we are still practicing in Maleku. So this is Maleku's typical food. Iguanas, iguanas has the skin. Mm -hmm. But originally, when we are gonna prepare the iguana, we are not going to remove the skin when we are going to prepare the iguana. Okay. Because if we are gonna remove the skin, the families, they are not going to like to eat them. Oh, so you need to prepare it with yeah, the skin on. We have to prepare it with the skin. As they're preparing the iguana, I just want to quickly mention, but as they've already uh, explained well, uh, Costa Rica is very known for its conservation and they do a great job to conserve. And so to conserve to the wildlife and the beautiful nature of Costa Rica. And see, so the only people that are allowed, permitted to hunt uh, are the indigenous people, such as the Maleku people. And so this family, they've, kindly invited us over to show their culinary culture that's been done for thousands of years. I mean, they've been hunters, gatherers in this region of Central America for thousands of years. And so we're here to really just learn, to experience, to respect their culture. And they're allowed to hunt, uh, the Costa Rica government respects their culture as well. And so that's the story of the iguana. It's really a privilege to be here with, with the original landowners of Costa Rica. When we are gonna prepare the iguana, always, always, we are gonna put or bananas or cassava root, which is yuca. People that are having like, like a asthma problem here yeah. in Maleku, uh -huh. and if you wanna be, a, if you wanna use a natural medicine, yeah. You have to eat iguana with a special, uh, how can I say? Is it a fat, yes. that yellow? Uh-huh, yeah. The that's, yellow, it's like yeah, a fat correct. from the iguana? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's why we don't remove that because it is special that's for our health. medicinal. Yeah, yeah. Okay, to make the process a little faster, we're gonna move to the gas stove here in the kitchen. Uh, but something that's you have to realize is that the entire iguana is used. Nothing, nothing from the iguana is wasted, right? Everything is used, everything is everything eaten. Everything is, is uh, useful. It's, because it has special things. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. This one is cassava. Mm -hmm. That's also gonna go into the iguana. The iguana with yuca or cassava goes into water. That's gonna boil with some salt for about 40 or 45 minutes before anything else is done. The fish is uh, roasting, the iguana is boiling. We have one more dish that they're gonna show us and that's with a gallina, it's a chicken. It's a female chicken, it's a hen. And they have invited me to kill the chicken for the, for the meal. So it's actually an honor. Um, and I do think that if you do eat meat, I mean, you have to know where your meat comes from. You have to just fully respect every animal that you are eating. And I think they, they truly, in the Maleku culture, they truly do respect. Nothing goes to waste. It's, yeah, they, they treat every animal that they eat with respect. 
it's not exactly the, the most fun part of the food circle, food process, but that, that is what it is. It's a part of life. And I mean, especially if you eat meat, it's, it's something that I think we should all know where it comes from and uh, know how it's prepared fresh. And then again, nothing, everything is respected. Everything is the, the entire chicken, as with the iguana, as with the fish, will be consumed. Wow. Okay. So as we were preparing the chicken, the fish is ready. It's been about 40 minutes or so. Uh -huh. uh, you're just unwrapping the leaves. And you said one of the reasons you can tell that it's ready is the, the juices uh -huh. start to dry up a little bit because the fish produces all that juice comes out. Oh, and as he's unwrapping it, you can really smell that aroma. Uh -huh. Oh, the banana leaves, but I think even more fragrant is those anise uh -huh. leaves, which have this incredible fragrance to them. Oh, that's so aromatic. We are gonna start. So, and so you make sure you eat a little bit of the leaf with uh -huh. the fish? Uh huh. Okay. So here? Oh, it's so aromatic, that leaf. Oh, beautiful. Look at how juicy it uh -huh. remains. It stays so juicy. Mm -hmm. Okay? And okay. we can start to it. Let's go for it. Yeah. Oh, oh, look at the oily juiciness mm -hmm. of it. Mmm. It's good, right? Mm-hmm. So pure tasting. Mm -hmm. Just, I mean, just lightly salted the aroma of the leaf. And it's cooked like perfectly, not overcooked, so juicy. Mm. Can also mm -hmm. eat the leaf. Okay, no, okay, gracias. Yeah. Also got to taste the, the, the flavor of that leaf. Oh, oh, the leaf is, mm -hmm. the leaf is amazing. It's, it's, the leaf is incredible. It has yeah. this, it has this silky texture to it. One more time, you uh -huh. know, the, the, the flavor it's coming from the leaf, mm -hmm. okay? Again, this is anise or estrella in Maleku Haika, or Maleku language, we call okay. that Klingon. Okay, Klingon. That's why today in our community, you can see people very healthy. Probably, because of this leaf? Uh -huh, because, it, because we like to eat natural food. Mm. For example, like this food, no spices. Everything mm -hmm. is natural. Mm -hmm. And this leaf is a big part of the diet? Yeah. It's often yeah. very, very common of course. in the diet. We are, the we are eating this kind of leaf always. Okay. I think what's incredible about the leaf is that it has this silky texture to it. And it has this, just a very light pepperiness and a really nice fragrance. Uh, and this entire preparation, it's kind of, kind of baked, grilled, but also steamed at the same time because of that packet of leaves that just holds everything in. So that keeps the fish so soft and so, so smooth and so juicy. Bueno. Muy bueno. <laughs> How do you say delicious in Maleku? Eching. 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 Como ustedes quieran. <laughs> el el anís es el que le da el sabor. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, that flavor is so nice. No, no, no. The leaves are incredible. Oh my god, yeah. The leaves the are fish delicious. Is so juicy. Yes. Like, perfectly juicy. Yes. After the chicken is fully parted out, cut up, washed, then she combines it in a big pot with carrots. There's going to be onions, there's some red peppers, it might be potato as well. And then one, another one of the main ingredients is chayote, which is like a squash gourd. And that's gonna be boiled up into a sauce with the chicken. Another maluka recipe using ingredients that they grow, that they produce everything themselves. But in the meantime, as that boils, which is probably gonna boil for another hour, the iguana is ready. Oh, cause people know yeah, okay, he said, here, you know, we have the iguanas and also here in Costa Rica, the people called a uh, gallina de palo because it tastes almost like chicken. Oh, okay. So the, yuca. the yuca, the yuca is boiled. Uh -huh. Oh, it's soft, really soft. soft. You can see all parts of the iguana, everything, the skin, everything is eaten. Yeah. The okay. skin, the tail. So I think this is the tail. 
Yeah. Okay. Oh, tail section. Mm. Bueno. Yes. Ching ching. What? How do you say? Uh, muy bueno. Etching. 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 Oh. Okay. Oh, with the yuca. The yuca. Mm. Etching. It's really pure tasting. Really simple. So clean and fresh. I wanna, I wanna try one of those legs like Elias ate with the skin. Okay, I'm gonna try one of those legs. Gracias. Okay, so here we go. Mm. It is okay. really delicious and pure. This is the oily fat, the yellow fat that you could see. And this is local medicine, a medicinal value to it. Yeah. Iguana fat. Mmm. It's, it's kind of like a, a jelly, actually, a straight iguana jelly. But that's the fat, that's the, a lot of nutrition in that fat. It's really, really good. Mm -hmm. And even the skin is mm -hmm. tender. Yeah. It's not leathery. It's easy to eat. It's a, such a clean flavor, so natural tasting. I mean, it does kind of taste like chicken. Or mm -hmm. actually, what it really reminds me of is frog. If you've eaten mm -hmm. frog legs, it has the exact same almost flavor and texture as frog legs really tasty. And I think also this recipe, like the fish, it's simple. I mean, this could be a recipe that they've been cooking for thousands of years. It could date back thousands of years. I mean, just, it's just straight iguana, yuca, water, and salt. That's all there is in it. And a recipe that I think the Maluku people have been eating in this region of Central America for thousands of years. So it is a, a huge honor to be here. I think also something that you'll notice is that the food is also not even salted in that much. It's not an overuse of salt like we tend to do in modern society now. We tend to oversalt everything. Everything is way too salty. They've just barely used a little bit of salt to bring out the flavor, but nothing is overly salty. And so with the iguana, I mean, I, I already can taste that the, the tail tastes quite a lot different from the legs. Almost like a chicken, right? Yeah, that's why, you know, here again in Costa Rica, the people call them a gallina de palo, chicken of the trees. Chicken of the yeah, trees. That, that's correct. Because they taste almost like chicken. It does, yeah. it does. And this is very healthy. I'm moving into another piece of the iguana. I think I got some of the, the ribs, the rib cage, this section. Mm. Okay, that's a bit tougher and chewier, <laughs> but even the skin is totally edible. And because an iguana is, I mean, when it's wild, it eats mostly leaves, a diet of leaves. It has this naturally sweet flavor taste to it. Such a clean taste as well. It's really good. And again, the way they've prepared it, the way they've cooked it, nothing is being covered up completely natural as they, they emphasize as they've done for, for so many years. And the yuca is also absolutely incredible. Mm. The yuca just melts in your mouth. There's a fragrance of the iguana that's just absorbed into it. I think just like a chicken, my favorite part of the iguana are the legs. Maduro. Maduro. So they're super ripe? Yes. Extra ripe? So another recipe they're making is a drink which is made from the plantains, which really ripe plantains, which have been roasted in the fire, in the coals, until charred. And they're actually kind of like burst open with that sugary sweetness. And they're gonna make a drink out of them, a beverage. Mash it, mash it up. You can see how they're just so tender and so, because they're so ripe. They're just almost melt in your mouth tender already. And then also with the combination of how ripe they are and then being roasted in their skin. They're so aromatic. You can, I mean, literally smell like the caramelized sugar in those bananas, in those plantains.
Gracias. What is the local name for this? Capi Capi. Capi Capi. Capi Capi. Capi Capi. Bueno. Muy bueno. Echen. 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 That Co is cocinado mm -hmm. en la brasa. That's that's it. Like, no azúcar. There's yeah, no sugar. It literally the purest, simplest beverage you could even dream of. I mean, it's just straight the naturalness of the plantains, super ripe, so that they're like literally bulging with sugars coming out of them. Tossed onto the fire for about 30 minutes until they just burst open. Peeled, mashed in a pitcher, water. That's all. No sugar. And it's so good because the complexity of that plantain, it's, it's sweet, naturally sweet. It has a tartness, a sourness to it. And it's almost like a smoothie at the same time because it's so thick and starchy. That's like a meal beverage all in, oh, and the smokiness from the fire. That's just so simple. Originally, our people, when they have children, they will be giving this special drink. And I'm gonna say that it works like a milk. Ooh. And the children, they will be growing pretty healthy. Because as you saw, no sugar, everything mm -hmm. is natural, and everything is very healthy. But this is machaca in Maleku. Machaca. Mm -hmm. And maybe the natural potassium and the minerals uh -huh. within the yeah, yeah, that's correct. The plantain. That's what also like yeah, acts, that, yeah, acts that's correct. to... Every to... single day in our families, we will be drinking this machaca mm. with our families. Mm. <laughs> really good. That looks amazing. So the chicken is ready. It's been boiling for about an hour. It's stewed down. It's tender. All of those vegetables have just started to, I mean, completely soften and bring out their aromatics and their flavor into the broth. So it's kind of like a soup, kind of like a sauce, but all one chicken in a pot. Oh, so let's try some of that chicken. Really interested in all these vegetables and the chayote, the potato, the carrots, rice, tomato and cabbage on the side as well. We're sitting down for the full meal. All three proteins, rice, the chayote, the carrots, all those vegetables boiled down. This is a, a really special meal, one of the most memorable meals. Gallina de palo. Gallina de palo. Y pollo. Okay, so okay. chicken of the trees and chicken of the ground. Mmm, mmm, that's a tender. And again, like everything, just so natural. Just as simple, but local as you can possibly get. Nice, I think I had the, oh, this is like the whole muscle man. Oh. Okay. Mmm, mmm. And then with all those, those vegetables, the rice, that completes the meal. I think what's also, what you can also learn from this meal is that there's no additives. There's no seasoning powders. There's no sauces, manufactured, processed sauces. Everything is, I mean, it's just a sprinkle of salt. That's all. Plus the natural ingredients. Oh, the carrots are amazing. Oh, you can even see inside of the yellow, all the fat and the joint material is yellow in color from that iguana. Oh, you can even see it's kind of like jellied, like collagen. And then along with the, the yuca as well, just melting. Mm. Okay. Yes, muchas gracias. Con mucho gusto. This is... Uh, Afe paquen en mi idioma, afe paquen en español es muchas gracias. Oh, afe paquen. Afe paquen. Afe paquen. Afe paquen. How you say thank you in the Maleku language. Afe paquen. Afe paquen. Y afe paquen Narakarrayeka. Muchas gracias, mi amigo. Oh. Let me see if I can remember that one. Afe paquen. Paquen. Afe paquen. Narakarrayeka. 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 Nara, the past. Nara. K. 
Narakara. Kara. Yeka. Yeka. Narakara. Narakara. Yeka. Oh, wait. Now I forgot the first part. Afe. Afe Pakian. Afe Pakian. Afe Pakian. Narakara. Yeka. Narakara. Yeka. Afe Pakian. Narakara. Yeka. That Perfect. means thank you very much, friend. Oh yes, back to the the anise leaves. That might be my one of my favorite flavors of the entire day. These anise leaves. Wow. Le gusta? Um, iguana or iguana. pollo, pollo de pollo or iguana, iguana más? Los, do, los dos, pero me gusta más la iguana. La iguana. En Maleco, mm -hmm. la iguana se llama era. 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 Me gusta era, era. Ajá. Era. And again, the, the local name for an iguana is era. Era. truly stands out to me is just the simplicity, the natural ingredients, and just the harmony in which they live with nature, with they treat things that they eat. I want to say a huge thank you to Mr. Elias and his family and also to my friends uh, Jason and Samantha from MyTanFeet.com who have an amazing uh, travel company covering information that you need to make the most of your trip to Costa Rica. So I'll have their information in the description box below. And also, if you haven't already seen the other videos, food videos in this Costa Rica series, uh, you're not gonna wanna miss the street food tour in San Jose, as well as the long life food of Nicoya, where a higher than average amount of people live much healthier, much longer lives, sometimes over 100 years old. So make sure you check out the rest of these videos. And I wanna say a huge thank you for watching. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe now for lots more food and travel videos. Goodbye from Costa Rica, and I will see you on the next video.